How much of this might be, uh, no doubt these are, these are likely related, or certainly one can be the consequence of another, but my, my thought is, uh, historically speaking, were these bound together on a single scroll so they would form a single volume? Is this uh, treating them as a single book merely the delivery mechanism that's being referenced, or is it much more than that, that, that they form an, an organism of, of sorts that, of course, it's an organism because it's, it's the inspired word of the Lord. That's a given, at least from people that are listening to our, our program here. We don't need to fight that battle in this arena. But um, I'm asking something a little more than that. Do these hold together like we find the Psalms hold together, you know, in a, in a way as, a, as an organic subset of, of Old Testament um, literature? Is that, can we I infer think, something of that from Sirach, that there's something more than just the way they were bound or the way they were collected? That's exactly right. And, yeah. and now to, to, you know, nuance this discussion a little bit, there are those that are going to respond to this discussion and say the thing that you just said. It's like, hey, that's great for Sarah. That tells us one thing. It tells us someone read it that way. Sure. <laughs> right. That doesn't tell us that it was actually written this way, which is why the textual and thematic ones, I think, are actually more important than the historical one. Uh, but uh, the other piece of evidence that you're talking about, is there evidence that they were compiled on a single scroll? And the answer is yes. Uh, the primary practice uh, was to see the minor prophets all collected on a single scroll. Uh, there was even some modified scribal practices that allowed shorter spaces uh, between the books of the minor prophets versus the other ones. So uh, if you're oh, writing scrolls, right, and, and uh, uh, they had a number of very strict rules uh, about uh, how many uh, words are going to be in the book. You have to count them all. Uh, what's the middle word in the book? You have to note uh, that. Um, and uh, also division of books uh, on a single scroll. And the rule right. was, uh, if you're writing on a scroll and you're dividing the book, there had to be a minimum of four lines, right? There had to be a four-line space between the books. That's the case for every book, except for those in the Minor Prophets, where the Minor Prophets are allowed to be three spaces apart from one another. So this is uh, for those for those computer programmers out there and, and other similar people. These are kind of ancient forms, ancient checksums. You know, sometimes you can yeah. create an MD5 or some other a hash of a file of a digital file, and you get end up with this code. And that way, if something goes wrong with your file, if it's corrupted, you can run the hash on your copy and check that against the hash of the original. And if they match, then you know you have the original. If they don't match, you've got a problem. So if you know that the scribe is saying your middle letter, your middle word is this, and you you count up your letters or you count up your words and whatever, you can check the the hash key, so to speak. It's a quality control issue. And you can see, oh, we, we made an error somewhere. we got to go find this out. And, and they do that for the minor prophets. So it's not only are they collected on a single scroll, it's not only are there only three lines and not four between them, but those tools are actually used to make sure that this particular scroll has the right word at the center point, has the right number of words in the scroll and all those various things as well. 